My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to do a series of videos kick off about valve, um, well, just flowing, porting, stuff like that. So what we're going to do is look at each uh, area and each variable, because, you know, people just think, oh, you stick a bit of blue tack in here, all is good and gravy, and as long as both ports look the same, who gives a shit? And... It, it's, no, just no. But instead of just saying no, let's see what considerations and what variables affect what. So before we start making outlandish claims or before we try and make any conclusions or claims about anything, we need to look at the variables um, that affect engines. So what I've got here um, is we're going to look at some variables that we can kind of just control. So just to make this very clear, this is just a cross-section. This is actually a four-valve head. This is a um, an R3. We're not going to use that exactly, but this is just to give you an idea. So we're going to take three measurements and then look at the effects, just using very basic flow calculations, um, just to give us a generalised idea and go from one extreme to the other. If you ever want to know how something works, look at the extremes. So... Uh, number one is we look. We're going to call this the port entry. I know it flares out, but this is just for descriptive terms. So in orange we've got port entry, and then we've got basically um, the port neck. So the smallest part of the port. The fact that the valve is in the way and stuff doesn't really matter. It's the definition of what we're calling what. So the entry, the port neck, and then obviously the bore. Um, so that's what we've got to consider. So when we look at this, what we have here is our basic um, flow calculation. And our basic flow calculation is A1, so the area of this, times the velocity is the same as or equal to the area of A2 here and this velocity. And basically what you're thinking about is volumes here because your velocity gives you your length, and your area gives you, well, an area, but that's a two-dimensional cross-section. So you can see, basically, the volume of this is the volume of that. It's just that you'll have higher velocity for a smaller surface area, and vice versa. So you'd call this a convergent nozzle, and if you reverse the whole thing, it's a diffuser, so on and so forth. Right then, so from that description I give, we've got port entry in orange, port neck, and then the bore and how they are all in relation to each other. So we've got diameter and area. Don't need to worry about these too much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through what's what. So the next thing we want to do is because we want to, um, one, make sure that our calculations are correct, but number two is to be thorough. We've got crank angle in degrees going all the way down to 180. So that goes down to 180 down there. And then we've got basically the piston velocity. Because at the end of the day, with a natural aspirating engine, it is the piston that creates a void that basically causes anything to move, anything to flow. You know, we have these velocities, but what's causing any of this to move? So the first thing we need to do then to um, get an, an accurate port, uh, an accurate bore volume, is we need to know the motion of the piston. So we've got crank angle. We've got this equation here the radius and the rod length, and the motion of the piston. So this is 0 to 180 crank degrees, and basically the motion of the piston in millimetres from the centre line to the top of the base of the combustion chamber. And then when you plug all this extra stuff in, if you see this, don't crap yourself. This is basically the velocities. So this is the actual velocity in metres per second of the piston. Piston crown, wrist pin, call it what you want. So what we're doing is, is with that and that all, all this, you need this to work out the port velocities, and then all of that ends up in this column here. So all of that stuff before ends up in the stuff that is in, let's just call it the blue column there. So we can kind of now ignore that. Now we know that that's all correct. This is our piston velocity in meters per second versus crank angle. Then we've got the velocity these calculated velocities here versus crank angle. So our bore 
our V, uh, our A3 in a sense is the one that's shifting. So that's where these calculations here basically match these calculations here. If you look, they're just basically copies of each other. Um, and then what I can do is I can change the diameter which changes the area. So to give you an example, that says 100 millimetres, but if we change that to 50, everything changes. Not these, but everything here. Everything here changes. So if we change that back to 100, you'll see all this stuff down here change. Like so. Because our piston our piston velocity isn't moving, we're just changing our bore. Now we do have to go into all this and change the bore and stroke. Well, just the basically not actually the bore, the radius, because we're not working out volumes. Um, but velocities wise, it doesn't matter. This is all to be crank and conrod relationships. So we don't have to change our bore in all of this, and that's why bore isn't here, it's it's um angular velocity and stuff like that. So we change our bore here, you know, like I say, we change this to 50, that changes this area, which changes all these knock-on effects. If we change our valve size to 38, then that changes everything there. And then if we change our, you know, our port entry, that changes everything there. So, and this is versus crank angle. So this will tell you when the piston is at the top, nothing is moving anywhere. When the piston has started to accelerate so our velocities are here when it started to accelerate you'll see that we're starting to get some you know some acceleration in the air around right so great if you take these numbers <laughs> so what this is and this is the first video there's going to be a lot more on this this might be all over your head but don't worry about it you'll get it so what we're going to is we're going to take those numbers and we've got the OEM if we look up here forget all the rest of it we just look up at this bit so the yellow bit's the important bit we need to look at. So we've got an OEM intake. So basically our uh, port entry is staying the same. We are keeping the OEM port the same. We'll get to that. That's got an asterisk to it. And we're going to use a small bore. So the size of bore that we are going to use is a 55 millimeter bore. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace that small bore with the word with 55 millimeter bore now we're keeping the same cc for all this comparison so our stroke changes so we've got a 55 millimeter bore but a 105 millimeter stroke that gives us 250 cc and all these cylinders are the same we're only using one intake port not to confuse things you can basically just divide it well you can double it or divide it by two depending which way you want it to go what we do have is that 54 percent of the bore is um, is uh, basically given to the uh, I'm trying to look for something at the same time is basically given to the uh, intake. So basically, if we call that our bore, and we have a diameter to that bore, our um, intake port basically will be fifty four percent of this diameter. So this diameter will be 54% of the entire bore. So that's what this 54% port diameter means. So for this 55 millimeter bore, it means that our port neck, this bit here, is going to be 30 millimeters. So if we put a 55 millimeter bore in there, 30 millimeter there, this doesn't really matter because if we change this, it doesn't change this. This only matters when well, you'll see when we get later on in this series. Um, but for the time being, we're copying the neck uh, velocities. So basically what we're doing is we're taking these velocities here. Because as you can see, if we just pick them three there, 18.8 .8 is the highest velocity. This is 8.3. You know I mean, And as you'd expect, we've got an, in, an entry, an intake, a port entry, and then we've got a port neck, and then we're going out to a big bore. So that's kind of what you'd expect. So what we're doing is we're looking at this and we're copying out all these numbers like so, but we're doing it for a thousand six hundred rp at six thousand rpm and eleven hundred rpm all the way down to all these port sizes. So then that basically pumps out all these results. The next thing we're going to do, so that's a small bore. The next thing we're going to do is do an OEM bore. So the size that this bore was meant to be originally, and that was meant to be a seventy-six millimeter bore. Oops, 
like that. That was meant to be 76 millimeters. So now we're looking at this bit here. Again, we're going to have to change that because this is a 76 millimeter bore. 54% of that bore size is 41 millimeter. So that's the valve size in a sense, the valve neck we're going to use. And then because it's a percentage, we can kind of get away with it to a degree. And then again, we're looking at 1,000, 6,000, and 11,000 RPM. And then finally, same at the end, we're going for a large bore. So in there, we're going for a 100 millimeter bore and doing basically rinse and repeat. Our stroke is a lot smaller to maintain our 250 cc, and our 54% of 100 millimeters is 54 millimeters. Obviously, these are all single ports. And what you end up with is when you do just one of these, so when you do 1,000, 6,000, and 11,000 RPM, you get a graph like this. As you can see, 1,000, 6,000, 11,000 RPM. Uh, the degrees in crank angle along the bottom, and then this is meters per second in velocity at the port neck. So five, 50 meters per second, 100, 150, 200, 250. And as you can see, um, well, the port velocities are a lot higher, a lot higher RPM. You know, it kind of makes sense. When you compare, not that, because that's the wrong one. We'll delete that. That was just showing off that. When you compare all three of them, so what we've got is crank angle across the bottom, meters per second along the side. They all look pretty much identical, and so they should, apart from the scale. So all these are 180s at 0 to 180 degrees for the intake. And as you can see, we've got a peak of 20 meters per second here, 120 and 220, basically. So you can see the difference. A, sm a small bore at 1,000 RPM has a higher velocity than an OEM bore than a large bore. So the large bores here, all the greys are all across the bottom. They're all losing out. The large bore, basically, because it's such a big diffuser, even when we change the diameter of the valve, the larger we go with the bore size, the slower our port velocity is. So the reverse is said for smaller bores. The smaller the bore we go, the higher the velocity is. And you can see that the OEM bore for this for a 250, around about there, on average, sits not in the middle, actually. If you look at the actual port velocities there, it's in the middle-ish, but there's a big difference in area between these. You can see that this pulls away a bit. You know, there's a bit of a pull away here. It looks like there's a bigger gap here. We go from... It is double, don't we? The numbers are double, but we have a larger volume um, under the curve. And we'll talk about that. That'll be coming up in the, the, concur the concurrent videos that are coming up. Basically, what we're doing here is we're just looking at balls, right? In the next one, we are going to keep everything else the same, but we are going to go for larger intakes, so the port entry, and then we're going to look at keeping the balls the same, but changing the valve size. So before we had a 54%, well, we're going to change that, keep everything else constant, and look what those graphs tell us. Once you do a change in intake, a change in bore, a change in all the variables you can, once you put them all together, you can then make assumptions of what's actually happening. You know, you could just take these, you could just take these graphs and say, well, you know, it's clear we have to go for a smaller bore. You know, smaller bore, longer stroke to increase our velocities. But is it, you know, is that the only thing to consider here? And the answer is no. There's loads of things to consider. Hope that makes sense for the time being. And I'll see you in a bit.